Hello, today we're going to be talking about shooting modes and in particular I'm going to argue the case for shooting in aperture priority to get the very best out of your wildlife photography. Now right up front I should say of course there are other shooting modes and I do know other photographers who prefer some of the other shooting modes and we're going to run through all of those in a few minutes but personally I've been shooting in aperture priority most of the time all my working life and most of my professional wildlife photographer friends also shoot in aperture priority. Now it does seem counterintuitive I know because you know as wildlife photographers we're often shooting subjects that are moving very fast we're having to react really quickly and we're using quite long lenses often hand holding them so we need to counteract camera shake and that all means fast shutter speeds but I do believe very strongly that shutter speed priority is not the way to go as I'll explain in a moment. Now if you don't know about ISO and apertures and shutter speeds don't worry have a look on my website there's a free downloadable information sheet it explains it all in very simple terms so have a look at that and then watch the video Okay, so in simple terms, there are five different ways of exposing your images. Automatic, manual, auto ISO, shutter priority, and aperture priority. All other things being equal, if you do them right, any one of these will give you the correct exposure, near enough anyway. But there are some very important differences between them. Okay, so let's look at automatic mode first. This is where you put the camera in charge and let the camera make all the decisions. Automatic mode works reasonably well. It works fine if you want all your pictures to look nothing like you intended. I'm being facetious. It works fine in terms of exposure, but it has two inherent problems. First of all, it's by no means foolproof. Even though the camera's on auto and you think it should know best, it does sometimes get it wrong. And in fact, in tricky lighting conditions, it often gets it wrong. But more important than that, it gives you no control. And that's hopeless if you want to improve your photography and be creative. I think the bottom line is don't shoot in automatic if you want to take your photography seriously. So how about shooting in manual mode? Well, there are plenty of fanatics out there who will argue that manual mode is the only way to go. They take a pride in shooting in manual. They seem to think it's somehow more worthy. I don't agree. I do occasionally shoot manual, but only when I'm shooting macro or using camera traps or doing some complicated flash setup. But most of the time, definitely not. Now, as I said, most of the time as wildlife photographers, we need to react quickly to changing circumstances and quite simply shooting in manual slows you down. There just isn't enough time to estimate the correct exposure and set everything yourself. The chances are, especially if the lighting conditions keep flipping from bright to overcast and the animal, the subject keeps moving, you're going to miss the shot. You know, by the time you've picked the right aperture and the shutter speed and the ISO and checked the exposures correct and adjusted it and fiddled around, your poor subject will have died of old age. As a general rule, the less you have to fiddle with and worry about, the better. Then you can concentrate on the more important things, like getting the focus spot on or the perfect composition. So moving on, another alternative is to shoot with auto ISO. You can use auto ISO in manual mode or aperture priority or shutter priority mode, but it makes sense to use it in manual. So in other words, you select the aperture you want and the shutter speed you want, and then you let the camera automatically choose the ISO to get the exposure spot on. And it will inevitably change during a shoot according to the light. So the ISO is the only variable left to the camera. This can be a very useful technique, you know, especially if you want to keep a particular shutter speed and a particular aperture and say your subject is moving between bright sunlight and dark shadow, say through an open woodland or something. The camera will keep up by changing the ISO accordingly. So when it gets much brighter, when it's in the sunshine, the ISO will drop. When it gets much darker, when the subject's in the shadow, the ISO will increase and the exposure will still be perfect. 
The problem of course is that when the camera picks a particularly high ISO there's likely to be a lot of noise in your pictures. Now most cameras do allow you to set an upper limit to the ISO but by limiting the camera you can get badly exposed images. If there isn't enough light and the maximum ISO isn't enough then your images will be too dark. I should say that more and more people are shooting with auto ISO these days because many modern cameras are so fantastic at shooting at high ISOs and producing amazingly little noise. And there's also great software out there these days that can get rid of any noise in an image really effectively. So how about shooting in shutter priority mode, which a lot of wildlife photographers do. Now that's where they pick the shutter speed and the ISO, and then the camera picks the aperture to balance the exposure. Now as I said at the beginning it's very easy to understand the simple logic for shooting in shutter priority. As wildlife photographers we tend to use long lenses which we often have to hand hold and we're shooting subjects that move fast. We've got to react quickly as well. So our top priority is often achieving a fast shutter speed. We want to freeze the action and avoid camera shake. Here's the important thing because shutter priority mode falls at the very first hurdle. Quite simply because it's almost impossible to guess the fastest possible shutter speed given the ISO you've picked, the lighting conditions and everything else. So for example, suppose I'm photographing, I don't know, birds in flight here in the garden. I've got a 2.8 lens and it's overcast, it's moderately bright. So I'm gonna guess that maybe the fastest shutter speed at 2.8 is going to be a thousandth of a second. So I'm going to turn it on a thousandth of a second and it's showing an aperture of f5.6. So in other words it's not using the maximum amount of light I can get into this lens which is f2.8. So I'll guess again I can make it a faster shutter speed so I'm going to guess this time four thousandth of a second and yeah, I could see it go right past f2.8 it was a slower shutter speed, so 4,000th of a second is going to underexpose the images, even at f2.8. So I'll try again. 3,000, finally 2,500th of a second seems to be where it works with f2.8. Now, the trouble is I've been guessing and I've wasted, even if I could do that really quickly to judge what's the fastest speed I can get, it's, I'm going to have to check that again and again as the sun disappears and appears from behind the clouds. So in summary, shooting in shutter priority mode, when you're guessing, you'll inevitably face one of two problems. You won't be shooting at the fastest speed possible, you could go even faster, or you'll be underexposing because the aperture can only go so wide. I should admit that I do occasionally shoot shutter priority mode and that's when I want to slow the shutter speed right down to shoot creative blur. Well I hope you're still with me because now we come to my favourite aperture priority in which you set the ISO and the aperture and the camera selects the shutter speed. Now this is the light bulb moment because if you think about it you have complete control over the shutter speed by selecting the aperture and all you have to do if you want the fastest shutter speed possible is to open your lens up to the widest aperture. So if I'm using a 2.8 lens, I'll open it to 2.8. If I'm using my lovely 600mm lens, which is f4, I'll open it to f4. And by doing that, I let the maximum amount of light into the lens, so it's brightest. And that means it will pick the fastest possible shutter speed. And if a cloud, for example, suddenly goes over the sun, it's very bright tonight, if the cloud goes over the sun, then the camera will adjust the shutter speed accordingly, but it will still be the fastest shutter speed under those conditions. And that's the key thing. There's no guessing involved at all. All you have to do is to keep an eye on the shutter speed. If it gets too slow for whatever you're photographing, you push the ISO up accordingly and it will increase the shutter speed. The other great advantage is you're not over guessing the ISO. So if you push the ISO too high, of course you get lots of noise. 
but you don't have to push it unnecessarily high because you know you're always going to get the fastest shutter speed. And there's more because in aperture priority you have complete control over the depth of field. So for example if you want a nice colour wash blurry background, you want a shallow depth of field, you pick your widest aperture immediately in the camera and the camera will not change it, it's fixed. The only thing it's changing will be the shutter speed. Alternatively of course your priority may suddenly switch from a beautiful out of focus background to a greater depth of field to get more of your subject and its surroundings in focus. So you're already controlling the aperture, all you have to do is close it down as much as you need. How easy is that? So aperture priority is a really great way to hand over some of the responsibility for exposure control to the camera and yet retain complete control over aperture and shutter speed. It enables you to dial in the fastest possible shutter speed really quickly without any guesswork at all and still have fine control over the depth of field. And of course that frees you up for more important things like composition. That's it, very simple, very effective. See you next time.